ClickUp, in my opinion, literally is the best project management app out there. But because it is so powerful and has so many features, getting started out with it can be somewhat frustrating. So in the next 11 minutes, I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to build up your first ClickUp project. And whilst doing so, I'm also going to go over all of the important settings and frameworks that you will need to understand to use ClickUp for literally anything. So let's get started by heading over to the ClickUp website. You can use my affiliate link down below to get yourself a free forever ClickUp account, which is a great offer for starting out. Now, once you are right here, just put in your email address and go through the questions which ClickUp is going to ask you. Alright, so this is how the ClickUp dashboard by default is going to look like. First things first, let's actually head over to the top right. Let's click on settings and let's now actually add an avatar onto our account. Perfect. Inside here, we can then actually also change the name which is going to be displayed, the theme color and so on. For now, I'm simply just going to save this. Let's now head back to our workspace. Now, this project right here, this team space has been created by default by ClickUp. So let's actually delete this right now so that we can completely can get started from scratch. I'm just going to put in the name right here and this is then going to be deleted. And now we've automatically have been redirected onto the home view, as you can see right here on the top left. On the top left, you can actually also see other important sections inside your ClickUp account, like your inbox, docs, dashboards, and so on. The home view would just be your home tab, where you can then see all of the recent projects, you can see the agenda, all of the different tasks assigned to you, and so on. Now, before we are going to dive into all of the spaces, lists and so on, it is actually super important to understand how your ClickUp account structure and how the ClickUp hierarchy is going to work. Now, on the far top of your hierarchy, you do have your workspace. This essentially just is the top level container for your projects. You can add new workspaces inside here. However, please note that if you are going to create a new workspace, all of the different spaces, lists and so on aren't going to be added across all workspaces. Rather, these are two completely different things. So for example, I run a media company and I then do have different kind of workspaces for different YouTube channels because each of these YouTube channels are going to have different kind of hurdles to take and different kind of lists, tasks and so on. Now under our workspace, we then do have different kind of spaces and let's actually create a space right now. To do so, head over to your ClickUp dashboard, click on the plus right here on the left and then we can create a new space. Essentially, these spaces are just going to be major categories of work, like for example, different kind of departments or teams inside your ClickUp account. I'm just going to get started by adding a new space. And in this case, just as an example, let's say that we are going to plan the annual company conference. So I'm just going to add a new space called pre-conference planning. We can then also change the icon and name inside here. We can then actually also select if we do want to make this space private so that only invited members are going to have access and just for the actual creation phase, I'm actually going to turn this on. Let's now continue. Right here, we will have to define our workflow. There are going to be some presets for this. However, generally speaking, I actually like to customize this on my own because these are going to be different from project to project. So in my opinion, it actually makes more sense to get started from scratch. Right here, we can then set the default views for our spaces. By default, we do have the list view enabled as well as the board view. However, we can then actually also add other views like the Gantt view, table view, workload view, for example. Now, you can actually also add this later on. Um, so I'm not going to enable any of these right now. Let's just stick with the defaults. Same goes for the task statuses right here. You can add them right now. However, I'm going to add them later on to have full flexibility over our project. So let's just create a new space right now. This is how it is now going to look like. This is going to be the default overview of your space. And inside your space, you are going to have multiple kind of lists, which brings us to the next tier of our hierarchy. Now these lists are then the actual containers which are being used to store your task, subtask and nested subtask. You can actually also subdivide these lists by using folders. So I'm actually going to add some example lists right now. So I've now added some example lists right here. However, as you can see, with only five lists, this already looks somewhat messy. So to actually combat this, you can click on the plus and you can then actually add different kind of folders. These are once again being used to subdivide your lists. So in my case, I'm going to add a new folder for budget tracking. I'm then actually going to create this. And now I'm simply going to move the expense forecasting onto this, as well as the sponsorship tracking. 
And now we do have a budget tracking folder right here. We can actually also add other file types like documents and forms and whiteboards, which we are going to get into later on. Let's now actually open up one of these lists. I'm going to select the speaker outreach one. So let's now actually add a new task onto this. You can do this by simply clicking inside here, or you can also click on add task on the right. I'm going to say Tony Robbins outreach, and I'm then going to mark this as a to-do. And now this task has been added. By using these fields right here, we can then actually also store additional information onto our task, like the due date, so let's say that this is due next week, and the priority. We can actually also add other fields onto our task. To do so, simply click on the plus right here, and we can then basically add new columns for anything we want. So let's for example say that we do want to add an assignee onto this task, so let's just enable that inside here. And now we can select a person which is basically going to be responsible for this task. Now, to actually add custom fields, all which you would have to do is click on add a column and you would then have to select the data type for your field. So this could be a number, this could be labels, a text area. In my case, I'm just going to add a normal dropdown. I'm going to name this dropdown one and we can now actually add our dropdown options inside here. And once we've now created this, this is going to show up right here. And we can then actually add the different kind of options onto this. We can actually also change the order of this. So if we do want to have this in a certain order, we can actually also change this. And we can actually change the size of each of these columns by using this slider right here. Let's now actually add some subtasks onto our task. To do so, simply just use this arrow right here. And let's now add a subtask called draft proposal email. And I've now added some other subtasks as well. Inside these subtasks, we can then actually also add nested subtasks if we want to. And inside these nested subtasks, we can add other subtasks. Essentially, this is just an endless loop. So let's actually close this right here. Now we can then actually also hide our subtask by once again using this arrow. And we can actually change the status for each of these subtasks by simply just clicking on here. This goes also for the normal task. So right here, we can then change the status. By default, we only do have to do in progress and complete, which I don't really like. I think there certainly should be more statuses to this. To actually change and add the statuses, simply click on the three dots right here and then click on edit statuses. Right here, this is going to be the same menu as beforehand. Right here, we can then actually add our statuses. To do so, click on use custom statuses and then you can add them. I have now added some more statuses and I'm simply now going to apply all of the changes. Alright, and when we are now going to change the status of a task, we are going to have all of these options and we can then actually change this around. And based off the actual status, this is also going to change the view right here inside the list view. Now with that being said, as already mentioned beforehand, there are basically multiple ways of viewing all of the tasks. Now, one of these would be the list view, and this kind of is the industry norm, this is the default. However, there are also some other useful views, like the board view for example. I really like this one, this is kind of a more Kanban-like view, this is going to be more visual, and you are then going to have different kind of tasks inside here, which you can drag around. You can actually also add new views, like for example, calendar views, Gantt views, table views, dashboard views, activity views, and the options are essentially endless. This is, however, going to highly come down to your actual project. For example, in this case, I think a board view does actually make sense, as well as a calendar view. As for a pre-conference planning, everything is super important. It is important that this needs to be on time, essentially. However, for other projects, it, for example, would ma make sense to have a whiteboard view, a mind map view, a team view, and so on. Now, when talking about these tasks, it is actually also important to notice that you can always click on these tasks and this is then going to give you guys an in-depth view of everything regarding this. This is going to be the status, due date, time estimate, tags, SNEs, and so on. Right here, you can then also view the custom fields which have been added, all of the subtasks, the checklist, the attachments, as well as the actual activity. So right here, we can then also add different comments. We can tag certain kind of people and we can then say, okay, change this. And then we can actually use this as a chat function. We can also add a description. And this essentially is just going to work similar to tools like Notion in a sense where you can just put in a backslash. And this is then going to give you guys all sorts of different elements which you can add onto this. Now, let's actually quickly opt out of this. As already mentioned beforehand, there are also some other ways of displaying information inside ClickUp. For example, you can add a document onto this. And I actually really like these. 
these in terms of the editing process do work quite similar to the description. Once again, you do have the same exact menu and right here you can then actually add all sorts of different documents and you can actually also add multiple pages inside your documents. You can actually also add whiteboards. These whiteboards are being used to kind of have a more visual overview and actually um, ClickUp does have some quite good templates for this. Um, you can access these by using this button right here and you can then for example add a reverse brainstorming template, a concept mapping template and so on. Let's for example use this brain writing template and we can then use this for doing brain writing. And I really like this as you can just use this as kind of a brain dump and as a visual overview of your project. Now, as you've already seen right now, ClickUp does actually have a lot of great templates, which I would recommend you to leverage. These are super powerful and can literally save you quite a lot of time. Now to access these templates, simply click on the plus sign right here and then click on use template. Now, because we wanted to create a space right now, the template type by default is going to be set as space. However, we can also change this. We can view folder templates, we can view list templates, task templates, doc templates, and so on. So let's, for example, say that we do want to add a CRM onto ClickUp. To do so, all which we would have to do is put in CRM right here, and we can then actually access these templates. We can use this sales CRM for us to use. We can see all of the status groups, custom fields, click apps, and we can then actually easily use this template within a couple of clicks. Now that's basically it for this ClickUp tutorial. Make sure to get yourself a free ClickUp account by using the link down below. I'm also going to do a way more in-depth ClickUp mini course in the future, so make sure to like and subscribe to don't miss out on that.